Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to see everybody today. So as we're beginning today, I, I'd love to know, what, what is it that you noticed today? What is it that helped you to pause and, and smile, maybe to realize what brings you joy? Maybe there was something you smelled instead of seeing it or something you tasted this morning. Um, what helped you to connect with, with the joy that God brings into your life? Wonderful. So the beautiful new stained glass windows at the Episcopalian Church. Richard. Yeah, as is the case with so many others, my, my car is absolutely filthy, filthy, dirty. But as I was getting out, I just kept getting kind of noticed that it, it rain splattered. And it, you know, although it wasn't very much, it wet down and it gave us some Absolutely. That, that rain that we got, it doesn't matter if it's a small amount or not. It, I think it brought smiles to a lot of our faces. That and that, that we didn't have too many lightning strikes as well. Jerry. The joy of having uh, just some people around to have parties for the grandkids and stuff. And that I have And just hearing about that makes me smile. So thank you for sharing that, talking about um, his son going surfing and seeing three porpoises come up right by him as he's surfing. What an incredible experience. And then the joy that's been shared and transmitted to the rest of the family and then to us as well. So thank you again for sharing that. What else, LeBron? Yes, the smell of rain. Absolutely. I noticed this morning just the, the different hues of pink um, as the sun rises coming up and kind of radiating off the different clouds. And I, I've noticed that with some of the sunsets as well, just some beautiful uh, sunrises and sunsets. And those always help me to take a deep breath and, and smile. Um, anything else anybody noticed, whether it was this morning or over this past week? just invite you to continue to, to take those opportunities to just those few moments wherever you are, you know, those things that delight you and bring you joy, that remind you that God knows right where you are and what delights you personally. Um, they're out there. And I just invite you to take notice. Are there any announcements this morning? Love on. So if you're planning on helping out with the um, rest stop this coming Saturday for the pedal to resettle, please meet in the parking lot um, briefly after church today. Uh, watch for LeVon and Jim, and they'll give you all of the details. So if you are planning to participate and or you're thinking about it, please do touch base with them.
So logistically, make sure um, you check in with them after after church today. Did you have your hand raised, Jean? No. Bob. So um, I think there's been a poster up uh, around church. There is an organ recital at five o'clock today at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Healdsburg, and the organist is David Hatt, who is one of the organists for St. Mary's Cathedral in San Francisco. He happens to live here in Cloverdale. Um, if you haven't been into St. Paul's Episcopal, they took the COVID um, break to completely restore the inside of their sanctuary and install a new pipe organ. Um, so it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be a real experience not only to see it but to hear the recitals. So it's five o'clock today, St. Paul's Episcopal in Gilbert. Great, thank you. Did everybody hear that clear enough? Okay. Um, and just a reminder: if you hear anything during our service today, somebody that's not here, you hear about them during our um, joys and concerns later, uh, or they just pop into your mind, whatever that might be. Don't forget our hug alerts. Fill those out, place those in the offering plate later in our service. And as always, if you haven't filled out one of our um, one of the cards if you're visiting today, or if you have any updated information, your email address, your phone, your cell phone, um, how best to contact you. You're, maybe you've moved since, <laughs> since we last updated your contact information. Please do fill this out. Or again, if you have any questions for the office or for myself, this is a great way to, um, rather than trying to remind yourself later after church, just write it down on this, put it in the offering plate. Um, and then, um, as always, also, we have our, our envelopes for any of your pledges or your offerings you want to put in uh, later in the service. And then one last thing that... Uh, Jelani and Holly asked me to remind you about is if you have not signed up for altar flowers or greeters coming up, um, these are through September, but if you're interested in October, those will be coming out soon. You could write your name even at the bottom uh, for October. Um, we'd love to get you to sign up for those. Holly? Yes. That's a great idea. Thank you. Yes, and we will be having our our committee meeting again at the end of September, revisiting when we will be resuming with both the coffee hour fellowship time and our Wednesday breakfast. Uh, thank you for your patience in the meantime. Um, just want to err on the side of caution. I know it's hard for so many of us, and so I invite you after our church service today, take, take time in the parking lot. Practice the social distancing, but take time to connect with each other. And then throughout the week, do that as well. Um, I know that it is, is a challenging time once again for for many of us not to have those additional opportunities to connect. Are there any other announcements? Let us go ahead and begin our service with the ringing of the bell. Would you rise in body or in spirit and join me in today's invitation to worship, which is found in your bulletin. Come, listen to the word of the Lord. Proclaim the goodness of God's love. Come, now is the time to worship. Our 
The hymn is number 111 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Please join me in today's opening prayer, also found in your bulletin. O Holy One, we have come today to praise and give honor to you for all the ways you extend your welcome and love to us and all humanity. Bless us now as we seek renewal in your presence and give us the courage and the understanding of how to partner with you to extend radical hospitality in our daily lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have two scriptures for us this morning. You may find them on the rear of the bulletin. And I'll begin by reading Paul's letter to the Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 11. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Here, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2 beginning at verse 1. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, 
any affection and sympathy. Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of humans. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. May God bless us with understanding of today's word. I invite you to bow your heads with me in prayer. Oh God, as we have listened to these scripture readings, and as we are gathered here today, we open our, our hearts and our minds to hear what you would have us to learn and to understand and to take to heart. Help us now to do that. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. This week we continue our sermon series entitled Radical Hospitality. And the intention of this series is to help us to enhance our current understanding of what hospitality means to us as individuals and as a church at this point in time in history. And how in turn that deepened understanding can enrich our methods of extending hospitality to others in revolutionary ways. As a recap, here are the interwoven layers which are included in the definition I am using when I say radical hospitality. Radical hospitality is about creating a space where regardless of who you are, there is a place for everyone. And not merely a place designated over there or over there somewhere, or maybe back there for those that we don't want to interact with, but right in the same space. Radical hospitality means that there is a space for everyone, not in us and them. With radical hospitality, our love cannot just be words and talk. It must show itself in action. Otherwise, our words are no more than empty noise. As Carolyn Lewis emphasized, if only some are included in being welcomed, while others are left out for any reason, one cannot truly claim to be hospitable. With this in mind, I draw upon the words shared in a recent blog by the Reverend Dr. Diane Weibel, our regional conference minister. Here is what she wrote. Quote, I was reflecting on what I'm seeing in the news regarding the Afghan refugees and thinking about where I was on September 11, 2001 and how all this has converged into this moment in time where my faith response is so important. Diane continued by declaring, this has led me to a conviction of what it means to be a person of faith 
called to respond to the needs of the world. Diane concluded her blog by stating, I hope that we all will find the courage to step up to offer the kind of radical hospitality and extravagant welcome we speak about every Sunday in our worship services. When we say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. But it's not all about large-scale tragedies. These are not the only thing that demand our attention or make the concept of radical hospitality challenging. There also tends to be individuals we come in contact with in our daily lives who make it difficult to extend any type of hospitality to them. So is the concept of practicing radical hospitality even possible, let alone realistic? Let's return to the most integral layer that helps to complete my definition of radical hospitality. That being that radical hospitality begins with God, not us. Additionally, who that radical hospitality includes is also determined by God, not us. The hospitality and the love that God offers is intended for who? All humanity, without exception. And God's words are not just an empty noise. God put God's words into action and demonstrated God's radical hospitality by sending Jesus into the world, bringing grace restoration, and a place of belonging for everyone. If we desire to practice radical hospitality, we must be intentional about choosing to practice a way of living that strives to model God's unconditional love and welcome of all humanity by trying to see others through God's eyes. Because just talking about radical hospitality is not enough, I am grateful that we can turn to examples that Jesus provided to help us put into action what can otherwise be a very daunting concept. You might notice that we often talk about how Jesus crossed boundaries and overturned stereotypes to come alongside and extend welcome, acceptance, and sanctuary to the marginalized and the oppressed. That aspect of Jesus' way of welcome is relatively easy to understand and admire. It's the flip side of that same coin, however, that I want to take a closer look at today. Because remember, the definition of radical hospitality requires inclusion of everyone. You know, like the oppressors and the abusers, and the bullies, and the human traffickers, and the murderers, and the terrorists, 
and even the individuals we prefer to avoid in our daily comings and goings for whatever reason. Before I continue, what I say next is very important, so please hear me. Radical hospitality does not equate to God or us condoning or liking the actions of these individuals that I have just listed. Nor does it mean that these individuals should not be held accountable for their actions or that the actions should be allowed to continue for any reason. This also does not mean, meaning radical hospitality, does not mean that anyone's safety or well-being should be compromised. I take it very seriously. My family has experienced a murder in our family, so I am not throwing that out lightly. Um, but I do want us to understand that radical hospitality, what Jesus sets as an example for us, includes all people. Amen to that. <laughs> I am grateful for that. Undoubtedly, individuals like I've described above when I read through that list require us to truly dig deep, 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 to extend radical hospitality. How are we supposed to do this? Because I will be the first to admit to you that I do not have all the answers. What I do know for sure is that this is not an easy practice. Because like much or most, all of how Jesus lived his life is countercultural, and it goes against the very grain that informs our commitment to helping those who have been oppressed and marginalized. Ultimately, it comes down to a daily decision to have this intentional mindset, which in and of itself will be impossible to sustain without partnering with God through prayer, and by focusing on Jesus' example. It is for these very reasons that I am all the more grateful that together we can begin to get a better understanding of how Jesus demonstrated a radical way of welcome. And he did this to those who attacked, abused, and sought to marginalize him and all those he crossed boundaries and overturned stereotypes to include. Today I would like to share four key actions that Jesus models for us when we encounter individuals who are difficult to love and include. The first is that Jesus didn't allow the actions of others to define his own behavior toward them. I'll repeat that once more. Jesus didn't allow the actions of others to define his own behavior towards them. The second, people considered as public enemies were embraced and blessed by Jesus. People considered as public enemies were embraced and blessed by Jesus. The third one, we know these kind of individuals as the ones being the most hostile towards us 
the ones causing pain to themselves and anyone near them. Jesus didn't focus on the evil coming out of those types of individuals. Instead, Jesus responded to the heart and soul of the individual, not the situation, not the action. And Jesus focused his attention on the healing he wanted to see for the individual's heart and soul. Similarly, the fourth key action that Jesus models for us is that Jesus saw those who hurt him as truly needing his revolutionary and radical way of welcome. And he prayed for them. And he prayed into their lives. Not just a superficial prayer, not something that was a judgmental prayer, but he prayed deep into their lives for transformation. We can never underestimate our prayers for those who are hostile towards us. Additionally, our prayers on their behalf will transform us. And as we're transformed, we will be able to see our enemy or the other or whoever is on that flip side of the coin. We will be able to see them with new eyes, God's eyes. Today's passage in Colossians reminds us that because God's gift of grace through Jesus is for all humanity, when we look through God's eyes, we will find that we are all God's chosen people. That is so much easier to say than to actually put into practice. Thankfully, our passage found in Colossians provides further guidance for how to practice walking in Jesus' footsteps of revolutionary love and radical hospitality for all humanity. What do you notice that the passage in Colossians encourages us to do? I invite you just to take a couple moments, look on the back side of your, your bulletin, and if you just want to quietly look through it and, and see what resonates with you. What does it encourage for us as guidance for how to practice walking in Jesus' footsteps of revolutionary love and radical hospitality for all humanity? the peace of Jesus to rule in our hearts. To be forgiving. To be forgiving. To be thankful. It's a loaded passage, and I would sum it up for you this way. This passage is inviting us and it encourages us to cultivate and to nurture within ourselves compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, the ability to bear with one another, forgiving each other as God has forgiven us, and above all these, 
We are to put on love, which binds everything together in harmony. And we are to let, as Andy said, let the peace of Jesus rule in our hearts. And as Levon said, to be thankful. We are to gather in community to encourage each other and worship together. And ultimately, whatever we do, whether in word or deed, we are to do everything in the way of Jesus. It takes practice on a daily basis. And we can encourage each other to do that. Our second passage found in Philippians describes that as we draw on our personal experiences of Jesus' unconditional love, comfort, and acceptance of us, we can in turn utilize these memories to follow in Jesus' footsteps by striving to be of the same mind as him. So that with Jesus' help, we might have that same revolutionary love and radical way of welcome that Jesus demonstrated is possible even as he himself endured hate, torture, ridicule, persecution, betrayal, and death. I agree with writer Benjamin Corey that Jesus never wanted us to have canned, prefabricated answers to every issue. Rather, Jesus wants us to wrestle with the complexity of his message over and over again until we are able to hold both truth in tandem along with tension. So to be able to hold truth and the tension in tandem as we wrestle with the questions of how we live into life, as we encounter people who are really difficult to extend welcome to and to include into the spaces that we're in. We will continue to wrestle together with the complexity of radical hospitality as we prayerfully seek an understanding of what it means to follow Jesus' way of welcome as we strive to see each person we encounter through God's eyes. Henry Nouwen describes seeing others through God's eyes this way. In the face of the oppressed, I recognize my own face. And in the hands of the oppressor, I recognize my own hands. Their flesh is my flesh. Their blood is my blood. Their pain, my pain. Their smile is my smile. We are made of the same dust. We cry the same tears. Now one concluded by adding, no one, no one is beyond redemption and no one is beyond being given dignity. It is when we are able to see others through God's eyes in that way, that we will find ourselves free to imagine being able to put into practice a radical hospitality which follows in the footsteps of Jesus' way of welcome and revolutionary love, which crosses all lines to draw a circle around everyone. Amen.
we come to the time in our service where we share our joys and concerns before we pray to, with each other. I just want to point out um, that following any joys that we share in the bulletin, it lists that our response to that would be thanks be to God. And when we share a concern with each other, we follow that by also in the bulletin, Lord, hear our prayer. And then following that, we will spend some silent time in prayer. I will pray, and then we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer, which is also in the bulletin. What joys and concerns do you have today that, that you have brought on your heart and mind? Um, you guys have heard me talk about world relief for quite a while. Um, we just received something Friday from Carrie Ham, who's the director of world relief, and I just wanted to share it with everyone. Carrie writes, it's that time again. In nine days, I, arrive, I ride in world relief Sacramento's fundraiser, Pedal to Resettle. As always, the ride is an important means for supporting the programs we provide for refugees. This year feels different though. The last several weeks have been some of the most draining and exhausting. Receiving more arrivals in August than the previous eight months. Sitting with Afghan friends in their fear for family members, waiting for news of who got out and who was still there. It's been hard and overwhelming. Seeing the community support has also been overwhelming, but in a good way. He writes that today he participated in a press conference with their local congressman. Um, he said their warehouse is overflowing with donated household goods, and we had a five times increase in volunteer orientation participants this week. The spirit of welcoming has been palpable. But one thing I know, welcoming is only the beginning of the process of integration. Our newest Afghan neighbors will need ongoing support from trauma care to English to children's programming along their journey to become thriving new Americans. This is why we fight. And he concludes by saying, if you want to know one way you can help, visit, whoops, Visit um, our websites. Visit a, a page of one of us, one of the eight team members here. Eight, I say, because we got a new one that has four legs. Um, or donate to a team, or just read what's going on. Um, it's uplifting. Thank you. So I think that calls for a twofold. One, for all the joy of those who are contributing and participating and the volunteers and the, the storehouses that are overflowing and, and all of that, that wonderful news. Um, for that we say, thanks be to God. But the journey is just beginning for all of these folk and, and some of their families are still back in Afghanistan. And so for all of that part of the journey, we say, Lord, hear our prayers. Any other joys? and or concerns that, that you would like to share. Yes. I have a friend named Julianne, and she recently was informed that her son, who was in Peru on vacation, was murdered. So not only is she having to deal with the loss of her son, but she's having to deal with figuring out how to get his body returned to Monterey. And what is his name? Jesse. Jesse. Okay, so sharing the news about Julianne and her son Jesse who was murdered in Peru and holding that family in prayer and also needing to get him here um, back to the U.S. so that they can continue with that process of, of mourning his death. And for all of that we say, Lord, yeah. hear our prayers. Any other joys and, and or concerns this morning? So our son Jesse was scheduled to leave last week for New York. He changed his flight to tomorrow. But 
So lifting up Jesse as he's embarking on, on the next great adventure in his life and starting his professional career and, and heading cross country and just that camaraderie and the fellowship with, with those friends he has made and, and whatever the future holds with that. And for that part, we say thanks, thanks be to God. God. And then specifically, just as that transition takes place and for family who holds him near and dear and in the, the emptiness that's there um, and just what all the the uncertainty that might be there as joyous as it is we say Lord hear our prayers any others this morning that you might have I know there are several who have either had a medical the healing that's still taking place, whether from a procedure or surgery or radiation. And there's been a lot of positive results, but there's those who still journey through all of those. And I just want to hold all of those individuals. Several of them are listed in the bulletin, but there might even be some we don't know about. And so I just want to hold up all of those who might have a, a health or a medical journey going on right now and say, Lord, hear our prayers. And for those who are traveling and on the road, I know there's been a few of those currently as well. And we also want to keep them in prayer and for their safety, um, which we also wrap in Jesse. I don't know that I mentioned that for his travel. And we say, Lord, hear our prayers. Any others this morning? Well, I invite you to, to bow your heads for some silent reflection. Perhaps there's been something that is on your heart and mind, just not able to share it out loud, but... Know that God knows and you can just spend a few moments in quiet, silent prayer or reflection at this time. O oh God of welcome, God of love, you've heard what is all on our hearts and our minds. You've heard the silent requests, you're aware of them. We, we entrust all of those to you. We think of those in, who we haven't seen for a while, and wherever they might be, we just ask that you, you bless them that you come alongside them in whatever part of their journey that they are on. Encourage them, comfort them, fill them with joy, help them to notice that you are taking notice of them. There's so much that we wrestle with in the news and in our personal lives and in social media and, and just all around us. And as we consider what, what it means to, to practice radical hospitality, we're wrestling with that in some ways, God. We don't exactly know what all that means or how it's possible in every situation. Is it possible? We ask that you just continue to journey with us as we seek a deeper understanding. Help us to recognize where you are accepting us and helping us so that we have a better understanding of that as well. We thank you for sending Jesus to show us a way that is possible to 
to welcome individuals that are hard to love and to include. Thank you for that example. We're also grateful for the ways that Jesus taught us to pray so that we can come to you with whatever is going on. And just now we, we pray together one of those prayers that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. have the privilege and honor of being able to give back during our worship service in gratitude and thankfulness for the ways that, that God helps us and extends radical hospitality to us and shows us love. Part of that way is here as a church family through each other and how we help one another. Part of it is how we are able to then in turn give to our community. And so I just invite you now to, to consider what is it that God has done for you that you would like to give back in thanks today through your offerings. And I invite you to do that now.
Oh God, we lift these, these offerings up to you. We are so grateful for all that you have done for us. Bless these and multiply them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to bow your heads for our closing blessing. May God continue to open our eyes, our ears, our hands, our hearts, and indeed our very lives to all those we come in contact with, so that we might welcome all in the name and way of Jesus. May God bless you and keep you over this week. Amen. Good to see you, Madeline, and Rich at home. Have a good rest of your day.